So they got him. The guy who allegedly stole from his place of work, the military, all kinds of very sensitive national security secrets and shared them with his friends online, a bunch of gamers. Um, is that espionage, by the way? It sounded like he gave it to the Russians or the North Koreans or the Chinese, but a bunch of guys he played video games with. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely illegal. It's definitely serious. And <laughs> He's in a lot of trouble. These are allegations at this point. He's under arrest, in custody. Here's the FBI. They showed up at his uh, home, by the way, a few minutes after, after the New York Times got there. Yeah, more on that in a moment. Who is this guy? Uh, his name, Jack Teixeira, 21 years old, an Air National Guardsman, recently promoted. So the documents that he posted online, first he was writing summaries, we're told, just summaries of the stuff, and he couldn't get any of his friends to read it, so then he started posting the actual documents. Let's go through some of the secrets, details on Ukrainian military strength, U.S. intelligence gathering efforts with uh, our allies and adversaries, and U.S. involvement in Ukraine, i.e. special forces on the ground in Ukraine. A lot of folks did not know about that. Anyway, this uh, person is in a lot of trouble. The attorney general himself, Merrick Garland, in his own kind of cagey way, made the announcement. This goes on for about a minute, but uh, something a little odd about it. I'm joined today by Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco and FBI Director Paula Bate. Today, the Justice Department arrested Jack Douglas Teixeira, in connection with an investigation into alleged unauthorized removal, retention, and transmission of classified national defense information. Teixeira is an employee of the United States Air Force National Guard. FBI agents took Teixeira into custody earlier this afternoon without incident. He will have an initial appearance at the U.S. District Court for the District of Massachusetts. I want to thank the FBI, Justice Department prosecutors, and our colleagues at the Department of Defense for their diligent work on this case. This investigation is ongoing. We will share more information at the appropriate time. Thanks, everyone. Did he have lawful access to these documents, sir? And he's out. There he goes. Whatever happened to a press conference, questions, answers? He could say no comment. He could say, I'm not ready to answer that at this time, but a little something. This is, after all, a democracy. He's not elected. He... <laughs> I don't like that. Do you? It's not fair. And uh, even Democrats are raising big questions about all this. This is... Uh, his name is Haim, and he's from Connecticut, Democrat on the Intel Committee. Let's talk for a second about the arrest and the story that you just ran, right? The New York Times knocks on his door. I mean, I just... You know, I've spent a lot of time around the intelligence community, a lot of time around the FBI. I spent a lot, you know, I have a lot of respect for them. But the New York Times beat the FBI to this person, right? And the reason that's serious is because what if he has suitcases full of documents and he's in the process of sort of sending them out, mailing them out, faxing them out? What if he hands all those documents to the um, to the New York Times? Now we've got sort of an interesting constitutional issue. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still, as you can tell, not exactly a calm about that fact. Yeah, nobody is. It's very strange. And the FBI, once again, not impressing us. FBI, whew, do they need an overhaul or what? Showing up. And by the way, their uniforms? I've got something to say about that in a little bit. Uh, there is a lot of shock that a 21-year-old service member had access to this kind of information. Um, there always is. This kind of shock whenever there's a young spy, and there are a lot of young spies in recent history. But anyway, here's a dose. There are a lot of questions inside today's Pentagon press briefing on how such a young airman had access to such highly classified intelligence. Well, as you pointed out, Brent, he's very young, 21 years old. Uh, you're not exactly the old man of the sea, pal, but uh, this is how it works in the military. When you're young, you get a lot of responsibility. Sometimes it's misplaced. And every time this happens, um, there's shock about how young these spies are. And sometimes they are young. In the 1980s, the Walker family, the son of the main spy who was arrested, was just 22 years old. More recently, uh, Chelsea Manning, I mean Bradley Manning, I mean Chelsea Manning, uh, 22 years old. Uh, remember, Commuted, sentence commuted by Barack Obama, 
available for a speaking engagement on your college campus right now, believe it or not. All right, so this uh, individual is alleged to have shared it with a bunch of friends in a chat group. You can't do that, obviously, uh, and our national security seems to have been affected. However, not motivated, it would seem, by the traditional incentives in spyhood, if that's a word, spyhood. The spies go off of these incentives. Are you ready? They have an acronym for it. It's called MICE. And this is understood in the intelligence community. Uh, money, ideology, coercion, and ego. These are the things that drive your typical spy. Sometimes all, sometimes one, sometimes in this case, maybe none. I heard that he wanted to impress his friends. I mean, could that be ego? But normally when it comes to ego, they're talking about, you know, some clerk in Langley, Virginia, being able to thwart an entire country's plans. That is ego-driven. This, maybe not so much. The FBI placed him under arrest, and I'm glad he's in custody. These are very, very serious charges. But once again, and this seems to be a thing with federal agents, why don't they mark up their uniforms appropriately? I'm sorry, but I didn't see anything that said FBI. I saw one. It was in very dark lettering. You're supposed to identify yourself more clearly. I, I see it all the time. Case after case in uh, federal agents, federal officers. I mean, these guys look like Antifa who went to Home Depot, maybe. It should say police right on their equipment. Too often they don't. And actually on January 6th again. I mean, who were those guys just standing there? Take a look at this. Letting this happen. It was weird that they didn't do anything. And it's also weird if you take a look that it doesn't say police right on the front of that equipment. And federal agencies, for whatever reason, do that all the time. We'll keep an eye on this case in the meantime. Donald Trump back in New York City today because he had to be deposed again in a lawsuit launched uh, by our state attorney general, the very unimpressive Latisha James. She knows very little, especially about real estate. I am certainly no expert, but I used to live in the neighborhood of this building, and this is the one that she's really hot on. By the way, I'm told that Donald Trump did not take the Fifth Amendment and ran circles around these people, and I'm not surprised. Okay, one of the big components of this lawsuit is the valuation of uh, a building Donald Trump still owns, 40 Wall Street. Um, Latisha James, in all of her wisdom, thinks this building uh, in 2011 or so should have been worth $200 million, should have been valued at that. Donald Trump, in documents, apparently put it at $524 million. Latisha James thinks that's too expensive, but anybody can do this. If you look at the comparables, other buildings selling at the same time what they were going for, Ordinary, not iconic buildings were selling very much in that price range, okay? <laughs> Some considerably more. So I don't know what she's talking about. And, oh, here's something. The post office in Washington, D.C., you know, the Trumps, they don't actually sell many properties at all. They hold on to them and they operate them. But they did sell the Trump Hotel on Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. What did the Trumps value that building at? They valued it at $290 million, okay? That was the financial condition. It sold for $463 million. So one of the few properties they've ever sold, they apparently undervalued and uh, made a lot of money on it. Good for them. Eric Trump was on the Carl Higby Show, which is a great show, by the way, 5 p.m. weekdays, and here he is. You see that time and time again in Washington, D.C. People go in like tough guys and, you know, I'm going to make a great difference. And then they break them. They break them moment one and they could never break Donald Trump. And frankly, it's why they're they're mad. The other reason they're mad is he's leaving the Republican field by 35 points. Right. And like, you know, no one else is even there to touch him. So they're doing the bidding of their guy in office who will likely be running against him. They're trying to disqualify him so Joe doesn't have to run against him. It's amazing, right? That, what he just described, that's undemocratic. That is the threat to democracy. So 
It's Tish James up against Donald Trump. I have a feeling I know who's going to win this one. And when he becomes president again, and that is my hope, I'm pretty upfront about that. You know, that's my bias, if you will. Um, he's going to take on the weaponization of the justice system. I will also order the Department of Justice to establish a task force on protecting the right to self-defense, which is under siege nationwide. In addition, we will have a complete investigation into the use of police state tactics by federal authorities to arrest conservatives and Christians. We will find out who ordered it, and we will hold them totally accountable. There is much more that we must do. We have to confront this radicalized law in schools. You take a look at what they've done to our schools, our beautiful schools. We have to reform the far-left bar associations and stop the purge of conservative lawyers from major law firms. I will do whatever it takes to save our legal system among the greatest achievements of Western civilization from the Marxist barbarians who seek to destroy it. And we will do that. We will save it. Thank you very much. The Marxist barbarians. I love it. I love it. All right.